The news of the death of Nick McGlashan, one of the stars of the reality television series Deadly Sketch, shocked many of his colleagues as well as the loyal fans of the TV show. He was part of the Discovery Channel's award-winning show from 2011, grabbing the Bering Sea aboard three different fishing vessels, Kodiak, Cape Caution, and Summer Bay over a decade. Ironically, it wasn't the danger of dealing with the rough seas that took his life, as most people initially thought. Unfortunately, it was his way of dealing with his inner demons over the years that ended his life unceremoniously, alcohol and drug addiction. Nick came from a family of commercial fishermen from the remote Aleutian village on the island of Akutan, Alaska. He was born Bruce Nicholas McGlashan on the 1st of August 1987 in Anchorage, Alaska to parents Bruce Lanford and June McGlashan. He grew up in a Christian household with his parents attending the Orthodox Church of the Holy Ascension of Unalaska. He later served as an altar boy to the priest who baptized him. For some reason, he and his sister Melissa went along with the father when he later moved to the small town of Eureka in Montana and Nick matriculated from the local high school there. The seventh generation fisherman was the grand nephew of his namesake, Nick McGlashan, who was part of the fishing crew of the fishing vessel FV Deep Sea, which was built in 1947 and was rumored to have been the pioneer of the US crabbing industry. Other members of his family perished at sea, including an aunt whose boat capsized and went down in 1986. To continue with the family's legacy, at the age of 13, Nick started crabbing and salmon fishing along with his sister aboard his father's fishing vessel F.V. Westling. He fell in love with fishing and would go and work on the crew in his father's boat after school hours, from which he gained the experience that prepared him for a life of professional crabbing. At the age of 24, Nick started working under Captain Bill Workowski, fondly called Wild Bill, and one of his father's longtime friends on the fishing boat Kodiak. The captain had 20 years of successful experience as a king crab fisherman on Alaska's unforgiving Bering Sea. The lure of earning huge profits having led him to pursue this career. After spending so much time battling the seas, Captain Bill went into semi-retirement in 2005 and focused on giving sport fishing tours around the coastal waters of Mexico and Costa Rica. However, when things took a downturn financially, he took it upon himself to return to commercial fishing and sought out a spot in the TV series Deadliest Catch. In 2010, after one of the stars of the TV show, Captain Phil Harrison, died, while Bill convinced the executive producers that he could keep up with the game, and along with his crew aboard the FV Kodiak, joined the fleet of boats crabbing in Alaska during the sixth season of the TV show. Nick was seen in the TV show by the eighth season. With his hardworking attitude, Nick quickly absorbed all the training he got from his captain and earned his respect. Eventually, when Bill went on to captain another fishing vessel called Cape Caution, Nick was promoted to deck boss. Their personalities were a match made in heaven because he was the calm to the captain's grouchiness. Nick was Bill's go-to guy as he was very efficient on the boat and could easily take on any roles that the captain asked him to do. In the ninth season, 25-year-old Nick was seen giving tips to one of the veteran crew members, Kirby Mitchell, who was the ship's engineer. With 30 years of experience as a fisherman, Nick showed him how to control the ship's hydraulic crane so that everyone would be safe from injury. At that time, Nick was responsible for throwing the hook to retrieve the steel pots left at the bottom of the sea. However, the aging crew engineer couldn't get it right and when things became awry, Captain Bill switched to places and let Nick handle the hydraulic crane. The great thing about Nick was that he had this easy-going, down-to-earth attitude. So when Kirby told the deckhands to bear with him, Nick assured the veteran that he was doing all right. Instead of taunting the old guy, he told the rest of the crew to give the engineer another chance to redeem himself. And with that much encouragement, the engineer was able to do his job, which somehow satisfied the captain. Everyone was happy, especially since they caught more crabs in their pots. Nick then spotted the ship's greenhorn taking shortcuts, supposedly to save time. When the pot was retrieved from the bottom of the ocean, they would replace the bait with a new one after taking all the crabs out of it, then put it back in the water. The greenhorn thought that it might be time-saving to just reuse old bait, but this didn't yield good results. At that time, Nick was busy hauling in the new catch, but could still see the other deckhands doing their job. However, he didn't catch the guy right away, and when the deckhand was questioned, he told Nick that he only did that for two pots. When they later hauled the pots, it was obvious that the greenhorn did that in seven pots, which gave them just one or two crabs. If Nick had been completely oblivious, the whole string of 90 to 150 pots would be filled with old baits, and that would have wasted time and energy. A successful fishing life on the Bering Sea could generate a huge amount of money for crab fishermen, but one should expect tragedies and disappointments along the way. 
in season 13, Nick wasn't his usual self, which worried everyone, especially Captain Bill. Nick was the captain's reliable right-hand guy, as he was very good at this job. That season, he seemed quite tired and wasn't 100% alert while on deck. He told a colleague that he'd been hospitalized a month before they sailed for a respiratory problem, but chose not to get any treatment. His colleague told him to heed the doctor's advice so that he wouldn't end up bursting an organ. Nick said that he was afraid that the doctor would tell him that his condition was worse than he'd imagined it would be. When Captain Bill inquired about his condition, he just said that he had a sore throat. So the captain asked if he'd brought any antibiotics with him. Unfortunately, Nick hadn't, and so was reminded that he should be prepared for anything that might happen while at sea. They couldn't afford any mistakes, or they might not only fail to meet the quota, but also someone could lose their life. It didn't take long for Nick to make a mistake, as he couldn't control the hydraulic crane properly, which led to a steel pot falling. He forgot to clamp the steel pot before launching it, so it nearly crashed into the other crew members who were waiting to take the crabs out of the pot. If not for the deckhand's quick reflexes, someone could have been injured or ended up dead. Nick was quite apologetic and acknowledged that something wasn't right with him, saying that he couldn't do his job because he was in too much pain at that time. The rest of the crew agreed that Nick was probably too sick because he'd never made crucial mistakes in the past and was always careful to avoid any injuries on the deck. Nobody was mad at him as they saw how he was trying to do his best given the situation. The good thing about it was that their pots caught many crabs. The captain had planned to take Nick to the clinic for a checkup when they returned to port to deliver their haul. He felt that there was something Nick was hiding from them, and he also wanted his deckhand boss in good health before they went back to the sea. When they talked in the ship's wheelhouse, Nick confessed that his doctor said that there's an imbalance in his blood count that might be an indication of cancerous cells. The captain convinced Nick that they needed to confer with the doctors to fix a problem. Nick was grateful and hugged the captain before he left. When his extra result came out, it was okay, and the doctor said he just needed to rest and quit smoking. However, Captain Bill was suspicious of what it was that really made Nick's health deteriorate. He was afraid that he couldn't do anything about what was bothering Nick, and if it remained unchecked, he might lose another buddy. In the fourth episode of season 13, Captain Bill finally discovered the truth about Nick. At that time, the FV Summer Bay was docked at Dutch Harbor, just waiting to set sail once again. The captain was sitting in the wheelhouse when he noticed two guys had just come out of the crew member's area. Nick's cousin was one of them, and the other guy was an unknown buddy. He was suspicious of what had happened and went to investigate. Nick was so wasted that he couldn't even look him in the eye when the captain confronted him. When Bill searched Nick's compartment, he found drugs on his bed, subsequently saying that he'd had enough and fired Nick. The captain also blamed himself for always giving Nick the benefit of the doubt and had given him several chances because he treated him like a son. He was so disappointed that Nick had the goal to tell everyone that he probably had cancer or pneumonia, the captain saying that the business and family truly didn't mix well. Before the FV Summer Bay left the harbor that day, all Nick's things were left on the dock. After their fallout, Nick was given another chance after he'd voluntarily entered a rehabilitation facility. Bill told him that he had to want it so badly for it to work. The good thing about Nick this time around was that he acknowledged his alcohol and drug addiction problem, which alone was already a major improvement. A pact was made between the two that a new level of honesty must be maintained, even if just to tell the old guy that he's tempted to use again, so they could do something about it. Captain Bill said that Nick had worked for him for many years, and he didn't want to give up on him. It was even the old skipper who met his deck boss at the airport, so that the latter could join his crew when they set sail again. It was hilarious that when they were on their way back to Dutch Harbor, a police car was speeding behind them with the siren and lights on, and they thought that the police were after Nick, but it sped past them. Nick never had a major problem again with the crew or captain on FV Summer Bay. Everything seemed to work out just fine for him. Whether he was able to cure his addiction completely at that time wasn't clear, but he continued as an efficient deck boss since then. It didn't matter if the Bering Sea was calm or if they were in the middle of an Arctic storm. Nick was there in great condition and made sure everything the captain ordered was done properly on deck. When Nick became sober and clean, he made it his mission to extend help to others who were still battling with addiction by sharing his experience and how he overcame his demons. There was a two-part article he wrote for Chosen Magazine entitled The Deadliest Disease, sharing how his life from the Bering Sea badass to a full-blown junkie quickly evolved. Nick said that the alcoholic in him meant that at least he wasn't an addict, the meth addict in him said at least he wasn't on heroin, and the heroin addict in him said at least he wasn't a tweaker. But in reality, he admitted that he was all of them. He said that it was as if a higher power reached out to him on the 8th of November 2016 when he texted someone with the words, I need help. Friends did help, and those three words saved his life. Three days later, he entered rehab. Three weeks before the news of his death went viral online, 
Nick uploaded a photo of a sunrise taken from a plane window, captioned, be a sunrise in someone's life today. So it was a shock to his followers that he died because of a drug overdose at the Holiday Inn in Nashville, Tennessee on the 28th of December 2020. After an investigation, it was reported that he was in Nashville to have fun with friends. The Nashville Center for Forensic Medicine official Krista Hammonds further said that drug paraphernalia was found nearby in the bathroom. First responders tried to revive him with a defibrillator, but were unsuccessful. When the toxicology report was released, it showed that Nick had a dangerous mix of cocaine, fentanyl, and methamphetamine in his system. Fans already knew that he had a serious problem with alcohol and drugs back in season 13 of Deadliest Catch. Most of the fishermen in the series said that he was one of the most talented fishermen who had a great work ethic and right attitude. And it was for those reasons that Captain Bill and the TV show's executive producers urged him to get help after he was initially fired from the show. Nick agreed and entered the facility to work on his problem. After rehab, he was offered his job back on deck with the FV Summer Bay. Everyone thought that he was doing well since then, but unfortunately he slipped and went back to his old habit. His family, co-workers and friends were devastated. He was survived by his two children, a seven-year-old girl named Lennon Annette Richardson and a one-year-old son named Kane Wilder Hammond, along with his parents, sisters and brothers. His family said that Nick would be remembered as an efficient, quick-witted fisherman and a caring young man who tried his best to overcome his addiction by sharing a struggle with the public, but eventually all to no avail. Nick was 73 years old. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.